Men come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and in the world of classical menswear fit reign supreme. Yet not all of us can be runway models. And aren't you tired of only seeing slim guys in every website, in every advertisement, in every poster of a man wearing a suit? What if you're tall? What if you're short? What if you're slim? What if you have long arms? What if you have wrong shoulders? What if you have a big belly? Could you still wear a suit? Well, no. Not until you find out what's coming up next. A man will rarely look any sharper than when he's wearing a suit. The reason behind this is closely tied to the concept and precept of the golden age of menswear. Back in the day, a man had to project masculinity. And masculinity came in the form of broad shoulders, a slim waist, and long legs. This would be our starting point. And make sure to stick till the end of the video to see which body type suits your own. Let's begin with the short and stout man. This build has a great amount of horizontality. Therefore, to achieve balance, our objective is to enhance verticality. We achieve this by first draping as far away of the body as we possibly can, without losing aesthetics. Why? Because if we dress too close to the body, we are accentuating lines that we don't want. So, if we dress away from the body, we reset our figure. And how can we achieve this? Remember, our objective here is not to reproduce the body, but to enhance it. So, we move the observer's eye away from the waistline. Let's see it an example. A single-breasted two-button jacket with a long rappel row and a spacious V will give us plenty verticality. Not enough for you? Okay, let's move it even further. A short man needs a gorge that rests slightly above his collarbone, as a normal gorge or a lower gorge will just cram his torso even more. Avoiding ticket pockets and patch pockets. Why? Because ticket pockets and patch pockets disrupt the verticality that we are trying to produce. Finally, trouser wise. A port man, a short man, needs a fuller trouser, especially if he has a prominent belly. One that hangs straight or above his waistline. Reverse pleats would be the choice here, and by all means, remember this. Fuller men do not wear a belt. He wears suspenders. So we don't compromise the vertical line the trousers are providing us. I would love to make a part 2 of this video since we are not covering key elements such as color, texture, or even the spread of the shirt. The color, of course. So please feel free to leave a comment down below with your thoughts about it and if you're getting value from this video. Let us continue. Now, akin to his cousin, the short and slim man follows the same rules with some minor tweaks. He should still favor or choose peak lapels above notch lapels for enhanced verticality, and he should also wear a higher gorge. But he can entertain a fuller chest centered around the waist. What do I mean by this? For example, a three-button sports jacket or a double-breasted jacket that rolls below the waist will give us plenty of verticality once again. His trousers have no need to be that full, and he could choose single or double pleats. What you must keep in mind here is that the upper and lower body must not be radically different from each other. Something extra for both the slim and stout short man. Slim vertical lines are your friends pattern-wise. So a subtle, very fine chalk stripe suit, for example, would be an amazing choice. Now, for a man above 6 feet, the rules take a 180 degree turn. You might have guessed it already, but a tall man has no need for more verticality. We must build his silhouette and enhance horizontality. We achieve this by first understanding that the tall gentleman may wear a suit that's closer to his body, his gorge should rest slightly below his collarbone, and he may enjoy of a bigger lapel size. Notch and peak lapels are welcome here, 
as are flap and patch pockets. Remember that we use this to interrupt the verticality. Not to mention, the taller gentleman may use a belt, unlike his shorter comrade. For the trousers, I advise single or double pleats as to provide a little bit more of oomph to his lower half. Remember, his waistline must sit just above his belly button if he chooses to, or ever so slightly below. Be sure to refresh your sartorial knowledge if this is the first time hearing terms and concepts such as gorge, pleats, lapels, by clicking on the card on top of the screen. Moving on, we get to the athletic gentleman or buff gentleman, and here is drape, drape, drape. The athletic gentleman has great shoulders, therefore they must be as natural and soft as tailoring can provide. He most likely also has quite the chest, so he can play with the width of his lapels. We don't need a suit that's close to his body. We by this point most likely understand that he's a big man, a muscular man, and we get it. You go to the gym. You don't need to wrinkle and crease your suit. His trousers should be full in thigh and hip, tapering down all the way to a cuff bottom. Remember, we favor drape here. The objective here is to counterbalance the inversed pyramid that is his upper body, moving towards that hourglass silhouette. Masculine proportions is perhaps the most important ability the aspiring sartorialist should seek out. But it's only half of the process. Color and pattern, as well as proportion, go hand in hand. And honestly, it takes trial and error to determine what would work for you. So if you find any value from this video, be kind enough to like and subscribe. I'm Mr. Panache, your guiding classical menswear and savoir faire. We will see each other on the next episode.